everyone, this is Sabrina here. So today we're doing another episode of The Coach's Kitchen. So for anyone who joined us last week, what we're gonna be doing is every single Friday, I'm going to be jumping into the Intentional Entrepreneur in my Facebook group, and we're gonna cook up a recipe, and we're also gonna talk about how we can cook up some intentional, manageable, and profitable online business success. So today what we're gonna be making is we're gonna be making Madeleines by Julia Child. Now this is um, a recipe, you've probably seen them at Starbucks. They're the cute little sugar cakes. So we're gonna make those and we're gonna be talking about mindset. So we're just gonna go ahead and get started with this first and then we'll dive in a little bit. If you are joining us, um, say hi in the comments, let me know where you're watching from. So what I've done just to make it easy is I have measured out all of my ingredients, as you can see. Um, just so that I don't take too much time measuring things out and we can really stay focused on the mindset and the cooking. Um, so the recipe I'm going to link for you in the comments after this live stream, but just to start, we're going to take two eggs and we are going to beat them in a bowl. So we've got the first egg. I'm pretty terrible actually about not getting cracks in that's something I've learned about myself. I always have just a little tiny piece in there. I feel like you can scoop it out with the other side of the eggshell. Let's see if that's true. Looks good. Crushed it. All right. Now there's more eggshell. Hey everyone. All right, let me take a napkin. Okay. So for those of you who are just joining us, hey Claire, um, today we're cooking up Madeleine's by Julia Child and we're also going to go ahead and talk about six figure mindset. So the reason why I wanted to talk about mindset today is because I actually got a question um, yesterday or the day before on a private coaching call where someone came to me, um, she's in my Bali Mastermind and she said, I want to talk about my mindset blocks. I have so many um, limiting beliefs. I've got so many issues, so many blocks, and I want to talk about my mindset. So we started talking about it and we very quickly realized that she didn't have a mindset issue. She had a strategy issue, but there are very real mindset issues holding us back. But I do want to go ahead and crack a little joke, crack some eggs right at the beginning and say that the biggest limiting belief you'll ever have is telling yourself that you have limiting belief. And I think that's the thing about mindset issues is they really are a self-fulfilling prophecy in that if you tell yourself something, those beliefs are going to impact your actions and behaviors and subsequently that's going to impact your results. So the question that I always like to ask myself, and it's actually a question that I talked about in my Forbes feature from a few years ago, is what would the six figure version of myself do? So now I ask the question, um, what would the eight figure version of myself do? Because I have a multiple seven figure business these days. But back in the day, I got started with about $800. I moved to Bali and didn't really have much, didn't know what I was doing. But I asked myself, what would the six figure version of myself do? Because stepping into that belief system is going to impact the way that I show up and take action in my business. And so I had a conversation recently with some of my team members and they said, you seemed kind of crazy when you were explaining this project to us, but now it's all making sense. And that's because when I do make decisions, make investments, hire, restructure things in my business, it sometimes take a, takes a few months for the results to catch up to the decision. So as an example, we brought on five Team Sabrina support coaches in January. We have six these days, um, and we're actually gonna be hiring again soon. And so at first, five felt like a lot. And for the first few months, they didn't really have much to do. And we were basically paying them to sit there at some point. But then in April came and we enrolled 100 new members into our academy program. And suddenly they were very, very busy. And since then, we've enrolled a lot of people into our accelerator program. And we're gonna keep enrolling people into our program. So I could see the vision and I took action as if it was going to happen. And because of that, my business is never really under a stress test. So what I see happen sometimes is people want something and then they get it, but they never created the container or space for it, so they drop it very quickly, right? It's like touching a hot pan, like you wanted the water to boil and then you pick it up too fast and you burn yourself and you let it go. That's not the thing here, right? You gotta be prepared, you have to put your oven mitts on. So likewise, I knew that if I was going to take on that much success in my business, I needed to prepare for it and create the container now. 
And likewise, you need to do the same thing in your business when it comes to the actions and investments that you make, if you wanna see the results that you do. So that's the first thing, really ask yourself that question, what would the six figure version of myself do? So we have just beat two eggs um, into a bowl, and now I'm going to measure a quarter cup of these into a bowl. So I've got this bowl for myself here. I've got my little measuring cup. So I'm gonna link the recipe for these in the comments after this is over. So I've got my quarter cup of eggs. Let me just get a little bit tiny more. Alrighty. And then I need my sugar and my flour. So we have two thirds of a cup of sugar. And then we have one cup of flour. So we're gonna take this and then we are going to beat all of this together. So this is a quarter cup of the eggs, two thirds of a cup of sugar, and a cup of flour. Now I want to go ahead and warn you that every time I do this, the flour flies everywhere and I can't find a way to make it not do that. I don't know if I need the world's largest mixing bowl or what, but we're just gonna go with it. So I'll mix it all together a little bit first and then see if that helps it not go everywhere. It's just because it's way too much dried mix and not enough wet, wet stuff. Let's see what we can do here. All right. So you can add in more eggs and they suggest that you do it a tablespoon at a time. So I'm just gonna take a teeny little bit, put it in here. some eggs left over. You don't want to get through all of your eggs, but if you do, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Some baking I feel like is super, super precise. And if you're off, you'll severely mess it up. But I found that Madeline's, I've, I've definitely messed these up more than once and they always turn out just fine. So we'll put in some more eggs. Mix this together. from let me know a little bit more egg this is a recipe I just tried out a few weeks ago and I'm having a lot of fun with it all right that looks like it'll be plenty okay, so we still got a tiny amount of egg left but this is mostly mixed together and it looks kind of crumbly I'm not sure if you can see that so that is our flour our sugar our eggs and what we're gonna do is we are going to let this rest for 10 minutes while we melt some butter and so I don't think you even need to set a timer for this because by the time you're done with the butter you'll be good to go so I'm just gonna go ahead and melt 140 grams of butter and I want it to get brown. So the easiest way to brown butter is to have a white um, pan, so like cast iron enamel. And I unfortunately don't have one in the mini, but I will get it, but I can tell pretty well what that's gonna look like. So I'm just gonna heat this up and I've got my butter pre-cut. I do not know what 140 grams is in cups or ounces, but we're just gonna go with it. Because it's fine, this is fine. So while that melts, and I will keep an eye on it, while that melts, I want us to go ahead and talk about some of the practical things of what having a six-figure mindset actually looks like. Um, Daryl says, watching in the Highlands in Scotland. Hey Daryl, I'm down in Edinburgh. Um, so we're gonna let the butter melt. So when it comes to the actual practical things of what it means or what it looks like to have a six-figure mindset, I think one thing I definitely noticed in my journey is that I made so much more time committed to actually doing the physical mindset work back then than I do now. And I've gotten that question a lot of, do you journal as much as you used to? And the answer is no. And the reason why is because the jump to six figures is almost the toughest in the sense that it really does come down to what you believe is possible because that's where people get confronted with their money mindset more than ever. If you make $100,000 a year in your business, 
it's going to be a lot easier for you to believe that you can then scale that business to make a million dollars. But if you've only ever made $40,000 a year in a corporate job, and then I say, okay, you can go make a hundred grand in your business, people don't tend to believe me as much and they need a little extra support and love. So when it comes to your six figure mindset, I think that daily commitment and ritual is really important. So for me, I did so much journaling around money mindset and really coming from that question of what would the six figure version of myself do? I think that there's so many other techniques that you can use like tapping, affirmations, you can do some really deep journaling, there's like rage stuff and shadow work and a bunch of stuff, but you just kind of need to figure out what is going to be that perfect mix that works for you. And so for me, what it really came down to was journaling. Now, the reason why it takes less physical time for me to work on my mindset these days is because I've done the heavy lifting of unpacking my limiting beliefs and choosing better, more empowering beliefs. And now the work really comes down to constantly shifting in it. So I consciously know that I can create whatever it is that I want. I know that if I focus on something and I take action, I can make that happen. And since I've already journaled on that a hundred times, the challenge is not going to be, can I journal on that and then have a negative mindset and complain all day? But is it in those little moments where that belief starts to pop up and I tell myself, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You can't do it. Um, you're too young. It's being able to shift in those moments to a better, more empowering belief that actually serves me. So you really do need to take the time when you're first getting started in your business. If you have not yet hit the 100K mark, I used to carry two journals with me everywhere before I hit, I would say my first quarter of a million dollars, I would carry two journals with me everywhere. So I would really encourage you to make a deep commitment to working on your mindset. And I think one of the reasons why people avoid it is because there's this perception that it's kind of like some hippie shit that we shouldn't really care about or put much weight in. But the thing is, mindset is backed by science. We know that mindset work and affirmations create new neural pathways and they do actually impact the way that people think and feel and how they perceive the world. And that's what mindset ultimately is. It's how you perceive the world and what you believe is possible for your life and your business. So it's something that you're really going to want to consciously cultivate so much. It's not something to second guess or take lightly by any means. It's definitely something to put some stock in. So for anyone who's just joining us, um, hi, my name is Sabrina Phillip. I am a multiple seven figure business coach here in my Facebook group, The Intentional Entrepreneur. And what we're doing today and every Friday is the coach's kitchen where I will cook up a recipe. I'll be sure to link it in the comments and we're going to talk about something. So today we're making Madeline's by Julia Childs. Um, it's her recipe and we're also going to be talking about mindset. Last week we talked about 10k months and we also made pecan tacos. The recipe was by Tabitha Brown. So one of the things we've talked about so far is really this idea of coming back to this question of what would the six figure version of myself do? That one is huge. Um, and also just having that really deep commitment to doing your mindset work. And I think that there's the work and then there's the belief and there's the faith. And I think that that's where sometimes people get stuck because they say, it's just not possible for me. And what I want to go ahead and tell you is every single person has their version of not enoughness that tells them why they can't have something. And so my personal belief is that there is my true essence, my true internal core, which is the same as the universe. And then there is my little human ego that gets in the way and tells me you can't have something. You can't do that because that keeps me small and safe and going for big things requires you to stretch and that can feel very uncomfortable. So if that's the case, then it's the human ego side of me that needs to get in check. And so that's why I don't necessarily feel like mindset work is about learning new behaviors or learning new thought systems. I think it's an unlearning process. I think it's about remembering who you are. And so that's what mindset work for me really comes down to. It's about coming back to center. And so a lot of people naturally feel that through religion. And I think that for me, I find that through my mindset work and spirituality as well. So let's see if this butter is browned. It looks pretty good to me. So we're going to take this off. Now this is the weird part slash easy part. So for us to use this browned butter, it's about 140 grams. It needs to be cold. Now I made this mistake where, because what it basically says is, do it in a bowl 
with water and mix it. I put ice. Do not put ice. The butter will congeal. It's going to be the worst ever. No ice in the water. So just have a really big bowl, a really small bowl, put it in the middle, then put the butter, that looks good, into here. I think we need a little butter to the side, so let me check. Yes, I need one and a half tablespoons of butter. That is a half tablespoon. So I'm gonna put one and a half tablespoons of butter in here with one tablespoon of flour, and we're gonna use that later. I'll show you what for. So we're just gonna put this in here. I'm gonna set it aside for a second. And then I'm going to put this in here in the small bowl. Okay. Now, I'm going to take my water that is cold, but not ice cold, because if it's ice cold, the butter will get solid, and we don't want it solid, we just want it cold. I'm gonna put it, oops, around here, so in the big bowl, not the small bowl, and we're just gonna stir the butter. this really quickly. So this is our tablespoon of flour and a tablespoon and a half of butter. So what we're going to use this for is to coat the baking pan. I think that you can just use like the cooking sprays like Pam sprays or whatever. When I was in college and also high school my family didn't keep those at home so I didn't have those to cook with. So what I would do is I would just take a stick of butter and I would like smush it everywhere and what I found is that if you do that it sometimes leaves gaps and like creases so I would take a paper towel and rub it in the butter and then rub it all over my baking dish I don't know if anyone else does that but I do that so I'm going to get a paper towel to clean this up and I'm going to keep these handy too okay so now all we're going to do is we're just going to stir this butter until it gets cold So instead of sticking your finger in the butter and burning yourself, what I would recommend you do is you just kind of touch the water, like the bowl in the side of the water, and you can usually feel if it's still hot. For me, it takes me about five minutes to get this cool. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and read what y'all are saying, and then I will go back. Um, Dana, Daryl made the vegan recipe from last week. It was incredible. Thank you for sharing. Yes, it's so good. Um, Chris, Christiana said, same, made Tabitha Brown's vegan tacos, but instead of nuts, I used banana hearts. So yummy. That does sound good. I really want to try it with walnuts even. I think that would be nice. Um, Christiana said, did you use journaling by writing whatever you want or look for someone to prompts? So for me, it was more about writing as if I was already getting that thing that I wanted and how that would feel. Because I think that's where mindset work becomes really powerful is that our, feel, our thoughts obviously impact our behaviors and how we show up, but it also affects our feelings about a situation. So if you tell yourself, like let's say you're in a really stressful situation and you tell yourself it's all gonna be okay, it's all gonna be okay, you will start to calm down. Your blood pressure is gonna drop, you're gonna calm down, it's gonna be okay because you have told yourself that it will be fine. So even though you sometimes get really pissed off when someone is telling you it's gonna be fine, they're doing that because they know that if you change your feeling about the situation, you're gonna change the situation itself. So um, journaling prompts mostly just wrote about as if I was already getting that thing that I wanted. Christiana had a quote for me. Hey Tara. So now I'm just going to mix this butter with a whisk. And we're just gonna let it go until it gets cold. Still hot. So this is really easy. So if you remember we have the batter sitting and it says rest for 10 minutes but by the time we're done it's probably been 10 minutes if not more so we'll just go 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 i think i almost brown this one too much today yeah 
All right, so while I'm doing that, if you have any mindset questions, feel free to drop them down below. Um, but one of the things that we've kind of talked about is how important mindset is if you are going to make that initial jump to six figures. Hey, Tara. So one of the reasons why we talked about mindset being so important is obviously it's gonna change your behaviors, it's gonna impact how you show up. But I think also one of the other reasons why it's important is it's not just about how you show up, it's also about what you believe is possible and who you wanna work with and who you wanna attract. So I think that there's a lot of visibility fears that come up for new entrepreneurs um, and also just fears and uh, mindset blocks around sales specifically. And I think that social media and sales piece is so key. I actually did a social media and sales mastermind, mini mind, um, a few years ago because I really do feel like those are pretty much the two biggest topics um, when it comes to new entrepreneurs, just social media and sales. If you can get that down, you're going to be fine. And so for me, when I teach my clients about mindset, what I teach is that there are three principles or three pillars that really hold down um, a rock solid intentional entrepreneur mindset and that is abundance guidance and choice so for me what that means when it comes to abundance is there's always more than enough there's always another client there's always another VA there's always another boyfriend not not now that I'm engaged just just one Paul's coughing just one Paul Thompson but <laughs> But there's always more, there's always another opportunity. I do not believe in once in a lifetime opportunities. I do not believe in one hit wonders. I think every day you wake up is another opportunity, right? Another once in a lifetime opportunity to make something amazing happen. So that abundance piece is really key because if I'm in that scarcity piece where I was nervous about going for it or doing that live stream or, oh no, that client signed with someone else so that's one less client for me, or if I invest in this, I'm going to not have this money in my bank account and it's all gonna go away, then I'm not gonna show up in the way that I need to and I'm gonna fall into paralysis analysis, right? I'm just going to completely paralyze myself and not take the action that I need. Let's see how that's doing. That's cool now. So that is the first pillar, which is abundance. The second pillar of mindset that I teach my clients is guidance. And guidance means that there is a higher plan that you're always on the right path. You are never too early or too late for something. I think a lot of times people get super frustrated because they think it's just not happening fast enough. But if that was never the case and everything was always unfolding perfectly for your highest good, then you wouldn't have that stress and anxiety of how things are supposed to be. You would just lean into the situation in front of you. A really great book about this is Be Here Now um, by Ram Dass or The Surrender Experiment by Mickey Singer. So really just leaning into your life as is and showing up for it fully. Now, the third mindset pillar that I teach my clients is choice. And this one is really, really important because I think even though you are letting your life unfold around you, you always have free will. You always have the ability to shift and mold and shape the situation to your desires. And your desires are ultimately your destiny. So that choice piece is understanding that you always have a choice in every situation Maybe you didn't have a choice in creating the situation, but you have a choice in how you choose to respond to the situation. And I think that choice of how we do end up responding ultimately is going to be determined by our abundance and whether we feel that this is something that we can have or something that we can't have or someone is taking it away from us. So those are the three mindset pillars that I teach my clients, abundance, guidance, and choice. I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to the side. We'll put this right here. And we will get back to our Madeleine. So for anyone who's watching this, like, what is a Madeleine? So this is what the mold looks like. So you've probably seen these cakes at Starbucks. Um, that's where I first saw them, actually. And then Paul was very nice, and he made me a little pot of tea. So I'm just going to pour myself a glass of tea, a cup of tea. Thank you, babe. Okay. So... We've got our cold butter. We've got that in there. And now we are going to mix the butter with the rest of the eggs. So remember, we still had a teeny tiny little bit of eggs left over. So I'm going to stick those in here. Okay. And then we are going to add in salt, lemon rind, um, and lemon juice, and vanilla. So 
everything is a quarter teaspoon. So it's a quarter teaspoon of lemon zest. It says lemon rind here, but we call it lemon zest in the US. So I'm gonna put the lemon zest in the butter, quarter teaspoon, quarter teaspoon of lemon juice. I made the mistake today of juicing before zesting, zest before juice, zest and then cut into it. And then a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. So I'm just gonna do that, good to go. Okay, oops, I put that upside down. Alrighty, so mix this together. So this is the butter, the last bit of eggs, the salt, lemon juice, lemon zest, and vanilla. Mix, 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 and then add the mixture to the resting batter and stir well. So this was what was resting. We will put this in here. Okay. And then when I stir with this, it all gets clumped in here. So I'm gonna stir with this little guy. Let's see how we do. So for anyone who's just joining, what we had in here earlier was just eggs, flour, and sugar. And we let that rest for a teeny bit. And now we've got our butter and the rest of it. Okay. So I've got that mixed as best I can. And now I'm going to use this guy again, which it's gonna go flying everywhere. So I thought I would just prepare y'all for the blooper reel. That's looking pretty good actually. So one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to preheat the oven. So we are preheating the oven to 375 Fahrenheit, which is, I think, 190, 375 Fahrenheit to Celsius. Yes, 190 Celsius. I'm going to put rapid heat on. Okay, so we're just blending all of this together. And then you only need to let it rest for like 10 minutes. But if you want the big hump, then you need to let it rest for an hour. So I made some batter ahead of time and I'm gonna do the little kitchen show trick where I'm going to like switch them out and then this will rest for an hour and I'll make the rest of these after dinner. Okay, that looks great. So this is what the batter looks like now. There she goes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cover this with a dish towel. I've got my doggy dish towel. I'm going to cover it. And then this is going to rest for an hour. This one has rested for an hour. So we're going to go ahead and use this one. So the batter looks way more solid now, as you can see. The other one was like sliding around. Look at the difference. This one is like a slip and slide. And then this one is firm in place. I, I don't wanna, you know how like, a, um, what's it called? The milkshake place. Where you get the lizards. Anyway, you have to like, at that place, my stepmom worked there, it was her first job, but it's, it's where you get the ice creams in America and they like mix stuff in the blizzards, but you have to be able to turn the ice cream over and it not fall off. And that's what they teach the kids how to do who work there. And that's what just happened. All right, so I'm covering this for an hour. This one has been going, so it's great. And we're good to go. So I'm trying out a new silicone mold today. I do have a metal one. Um, but since it's silicone, if I fill this up, I feel like it's going to go all wibbly wobbly. So... going to put a baking sheet down first and then this okay so remember how earlier we made a tablespoon and a half of butter melted butter and a tablespoon of flour we're going to use that now 
So really easy. What I do is I just, oh, I have a pastry brush now. That's right. I just got this. It's exciting. I don't have to use my paper towel trick anymore. So fun times ahead. Pastry brush or what I do is a paper towel. I just got this. So I forgot that I had this, but just take this and then brush each of the tiny little molds. I'll show you what I'm doing. So we do this because this is the non-stick. But apparently silicone is non-stick anyway. But this is what Julia Child said, so that's what we're doing. I'm one of those people who like follows a recipe exact. It's not because I am neurotic, although I probably am. I think it's just because, I think it's very cool that this recipe was made like 50, 60 years ago, God knows how long ago. And people can still make it exactly as she intended to make it and it still tastes, tastes delicious. Like there are some things that kind of run out of time, right? Technology I think is one of them. Lots of cultural things, music, clothes, you can't really do that, right? If I dress the way that I dressed when I was 10 years old, y'all would think I'm a creep. But I can make Julia Child's Madeleines exactly as she intended them. And something else that will stick with you for the rest of your life is your mindset. So it's not something to shortcut. It's not something to substitute, right? We're not substituting any of this stuff. Following the recipe exactly as it said. And because of that, we're going to get the results. And it's going to work perfectly. All right, that's the day. So the oven is ready. So I know that the title of this video is Six Figure Mindset, but now that I'm at multiple seven figures, seven figures in my business, I also want to talk to you about how your mindset will scale with you and how it's going to grow with you. So for me, my mindset practice definitely looks different, but on the inside it's the same. And I think the other thing also is a lot of people will tell you new level, new devil. And I think people who say that have probably always been stuck in the exact same place for their entire life. Because the truth is, when you get to the next level, it's just another version of the exact same shit, right? So abundance mindset, scarcity mindset, you're gonna come up against that every time you break into the next level of your business. If you think that you're done with your money mindset once you have your first 10K month, honey, you're in for a surprise. I remember when I was at the Chanel store in Sydney, I was about to buy my first ever Chanel bag. It was a black jumbo caviar classic black with silver hardware and it was about eight thousand dollars i think eight thousand australians so maybe like eighty five hundred australian i don't know it was about six thousand fifty five hundred at the time which would be fucking awesome because the prices have drastically gone up on those buddies all right so we've got that in but at the time it felt hi mom at the time, it felt so scary, and I absolutely thought that I was going to die. And I remember Paul was there with me, and I was freaking out at the store, and I was telling him, I can't buy it, I can't buy it, it's too expensive, it's too expensive. And then I bought it. And then when I got to buying my Birkin bag, which I spent about $18,000 on, I had the exact same stuff. Oh my God, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, I can't buy it, I can't get it. And then I got it, and then I'm sure the next time I buy another really big bag or piece of jewelry or car or house or whatever it is, I'm going to come up against those things. But what ends up happening is you lean into that discomfort, and then that becomes your new normal, right? So for me, it was very overwhelming to commit to getting a house, getting a lease. And then I did, and very quickly, after only three and a half weeks, we haven't even paid our second month's rent yet, not even a full month in, it's our new normal, right? It's something that I feel so used to, so safe in, so good with. So it does get to shift for you. But remember that you are gonna come up against a lot of the same stuff every single time you get to the next level in your business. And the reason why is because there is the limiting belief, which is kind of surface level what you see, but what's actually being touched is that pain of I'm not enough and I cannot have the thing that I want because of who I am. Right? So some of us will say that it's because we're not smart enough, we're not from the right country, we didn't get a college degree, we're too young, we're too old, we're too skinny, we're too fat. Whatever bullshit reason our mind tells us, every single person has some BS reason for why they can't have that thing that they want. And then that manifests in many different limiting beliefs and also limiting behaviors and patterns of how you show up and sabotage yourself. 
So what we're going to go ahead and do now is we're going to take the batter and put it into here. So we're going to do about a tablespoon per madeleine. So these recipes always say that it makes 24 madeleines. I can't do that. It's always like 16 for me. I don't know how people make 24. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I never measure out the batter. So let's see, maybe that will make a difference. I just kind of fill it till it's close to full. Maybe that's not right, but they always taste delicious, so who really cares? I think baking is gonna be a good metaphor today because even though some people think you have to follow the recipe exactly, you can still fuck with it a bit and still get good results. And the reason why that's a good metaphor is because everyone's recipe for mindset success is gonna be a little bit different. There's underlying principles that always stay the same, but how you show up gets to be different. And I think the other thing that also is important to note here is if you have a mindset practice, you probably are just not aware of it. And that's because mindset is fundamentally a belief system and every single person has a belief system for a lot of people their belief system comes from their religion that's very true in the united states for others their belief system is tied to money and work ethic right so i would say that my dad's belief system is work very 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 hard until you die because he's german and that's what they teach the kids work hard and then die. That's a joke, my mom's watching that, so I'm just doing that to fuck with her a little bit, hi mom. My belief system that probably was very annoying as a child is that I can have whatever I want. And I think this is where guidance comes in, that second mindset pillar that I told you about, right? This belief of it's not happening fast enough. I was right, I could have whatever I wanted. I just needed to wait until I was in the position where I was ready for that. I wasn't ready to light the world on fire at 10 years old, 15 years old. I was annoying as hell about it to my mom, but I wasn't ready for it. Got older, now I am. And I did it. So it's all working out for you perfectly in every situation ever in my life. Got me ready for this moment, so it's all good. Alrighty, we're almost done. That does not look like 24 Madelines. That looks like 16 to me. Very intrigued to see how the silicone mold does compared to my normal metal mold. And then we'll put that there. And any other little bits we just drop. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean this up a little bit because I don't want it baking all weird. Okay, I'm sure it'll work out. And it cooks really fast. It says like 15 minutes, but that's a lie. They're always done in eight. Another good mindset analogy. Anything someone tells you that it's how long it's going to take, do it faster. You can always do it faster. I like to clean my edges because I don't know if it's going to like get really big and bake over. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. We are going to put this into the oven. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I'll pull them out and show you what they look like. It says 15 minutes, it's probably gonna take eight. I put it toward the top of my oven. In she goes. That's what they look like, by the way. And done like a dingo's breakfast. So, I thought I would call a very special sous chef guest, Mr. Paul Charles Thompson. 
Listen, darling, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Alrighty, I'm just checking the time. Okay, that has been only 45 minutes of prep work, and that was with me talking. You can honestly prep these in 25 minutes, side note. Um, but yes, how did I do? Yeah, I thought you did bloody great. I loved it. Do you like my Madeleines? I do, very much so. I cook them I, a lot. They are very Moorish. What's Moorish? Well, you always want more of them. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, they're Moorish, so you just can't stop eating them. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, which makes, I'm sad for you though. Why? Because you don't get any Madeleines. But that's why I made 16. Well, you can have one, I'll have 15. So I made 16 today, but usually I have my metal tin of 12, which looks like this. Smells really nice. Yes. Also, if you didn't know, I have a thing for bees. There are bees everywhere. We've got bees, we've got bees, bees everywhere. So the reason why is because bees are a symbol of abundance. Anyway, I got this very cool cake tin and it's beehives with bees. So we're definitely gonna do something with this. What can you do with that? What are you gonna put in there? Like a like a nice cake. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like a mini cake? Yeah. That would be nice. The problem is Paul doesn't like anything with lemon, which is very sick and twisted. No, I like limoncello. Yeah, sure. Um, but yeah, so he doesn't really like too much with lemons, but I wanted to do maybe like a lemon poppy seed cake. I do like that. Nice and glazed. Yeah, grandma makes a good lemon poppy seed cake, so does Deb. There you go. Yep. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah, so what questions do you have about mindset or what, what are some of the things that you hear me talk about a lot with mindset? Mm. I've got a lot of cooking in my brain, so I needed to call in some backup while we let these guys cook. Yeah, I think a lot of people have this, like it's a, a limiting, they put a ceiling or a cap on what they think they can get. You yeah. know, they're always trying to get their first client, you know, or sell, you know, get their second client, but not their 10th, you know, <laughs> I just... Yeah. It's so interesting how we set our goals based on what we expect we're going to get rather than what we believe, you know, is possible. I think something that can help here is to set good, better, best goals. So a lot of times whenever I have a client who comes to me and they say, I never, ever, ever hit my goals. I set a goal, I work for it, I show up, but I just don't have it. What I recommend is that they instead have a good, better, best goal. And the good should be something that is really attainable it's something that you almost expect to hit so for example with another round of the bali mastermind let's say i had a good goal of 10 people mm -hmm. we know we'll get 10 people that's my good goal good yay you got 10 people my better goal might be 15 people and then my best goal might be 20 people or 25 people and i think the problem is a lot of people have their absolute best goal as their baseline mm. and the reason why that's an issue is because it's very um, uncomfortable and destabilizing to feel like you're never hitting your goals and like it just feels so far away and I think what Paul is also talking about is how we constantly move the goalpost as well so you know you maybe get something like let's say you got your 10th client and you're like yay I wanted 10 people in my mastermind and then you're like, well, I should have had 15. I should have set a goal for 15 or I want to get five more mm. instead of stopping and celebrating the fact that you got 10 clients. And the reason why that's important is remember, mindset has a lot to do with thoughts, but it also has a lot to do with feelings because your belief is going to influence your behaviors and your feelings. And we as humans like the things that feel good. Yeah. I think also people compare themselves to others, you know, yeah. even if they hit a really good goal or better goal or best goal, they still look at someone else to the side and go, oh, but I'm nowhere near as good as that person. I'll never catch that other person. They're in my niche as well. And they're, yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend that you put blinders on. I think mm. this also is great because it leans back on the second mindset pillar of guidance. See, my mindset pillars are very all-encompassing. Yeah, I do like them. They're very all-encompassing. Yeah. I've, I've never been stumped on a mindset question. But if you lean back into this idea of guidance, of it's all unfolding for me perfectly, and I am on my path, then it's going to be fine. And I think one of the reasons why it can also be damaging to pay so much attention to what other people are doing 
is because you start to borrow and try on for size their path and their goals and their tactics and their strategies. This shiny object syndrome. Right. <laughs> and very rarely is that effective. It might be in the short term, but long term it definitely will. And even if you are met with some success, you're going to wake up one day thinking, how, how did I get here? How mm. is this my life? Yeah, there's no foundations, right? There's, there's no learning. There's no progress that's happened intrinsically. It's yeah. all just been pickpocketing off, you know, other people. So I think it's a slippery slope to cherry pick, you know, on the latest fad. How do you think the Madelines are looking? Um, oh, yeah, they're, they're going good. I think they're about halfway at the moment. They still need some time. Still a bit wet in the middle. Yeah. yeah. We can cook these too. I, I was just about to say that we have a whole other lot of batter here that we can put in maybe the metal tin if you want. How much time has it been? 7.20 p.m. So that means it's definitely resting for... Oh, wait, no. This is the one we just made. Yeah, so maybe only maybe, 10 minutes. No, it needs some more time. Okay. Hi, Back lad. under the blanket. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No. Um, hey, Rachel. Hey, Dana. My mom says just got my Madeline pan and Wittered loose leaf tea. Yes, I'm going to be the spokesperson for Wittered. This is my silver needle tea that we're drinking and enjoying today. So if you have any mindset questions, feel free to drop them down below into the chat box. I've been told that this is my father-in-law's favorite weekly TV show. Yep. Yeah, Greg. He watches this. He's very excited that his daughter-in-law has a cooking show. So he'll be watching this. Yeah. It's fun. I um, like it. What, what happens? What advice do you have for someone who is in a bit of a slump, is in a mindset slump, who's okay. just in the pits? How about this? Let's throw the question back. I think a lot of times people believe that if you have success, that you must not have a mindset issue. You have definitely seen many mindset slumps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I was in a mindset slump and you had to fix me, what would you do? Starts with cuddles. <laughs> Just, yeah, just compassion and patience and getting you doing things that make you feel um, alive and excited and back in your, your zone of genius. So by shifting our feelings, mm. we shift our thoughts, we shift our behaviors. So for me, some of the ways I might shift my feelings would be baking, cooking. Yeah. Um, it might be making a cheese board in a glass of wine. It might be a bath. It might be calling my friends, calling my family, calling my coach. So I totally agree with you on like that feeling piece is so key because sometimes when you're really stuck on the thought, it doesn't matter what I tell you. It doesn't matter if I tell you, you're amazing, you're great, you can have anything you want, go for it. If you do not feel that mm -hmm. feeling and energy of abundance and excitement, it can be really difficult to snap you out of a stuck mindset. Yeah, it'll just go in one ear, out the other. Right, so I think that's a really good reflection. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I would tell someone who's in a bit of a mindset slump. So our cakes that's are advice. firming up a little bit. Yeah, they've still got some time to go. That's exciting. Mm. Yeah. Do you think we'll take the 20 minutes? I think it's just going to be eight. No, I think it'll it'll take a fair bit of time. Don't say that. <laughs> it's pretty wet in the middle. I know. Do you think maybe the metal tin is impacting the silicone? No, I don't think no, so. No, it's starting to separate from there. Yeah, just a little bit. What do you think we should talk about next week? What do you think we should cook next week? I actually think I did pick already what we're what cooking next week. I think pick? it's beef bolognese. Oh, yes. Let me check this This is song. great. I should get in on the recipe list here. We. I should put in my suggestions for We recipes. decided it a few days ago. I'm pretty sure it's beef bolognese next week. And then... I think creamy mushroom chicken is coming up as well. This is the best thing you've ever done. Oh, I don't have slack open. I'm pretty sure it's beef bolognese and creamy mushroom chicken. Okay, yum. Yeah, so I think that's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. We need to see these cakes. We need them to cook. Cook faster, little guys. We're going. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us. I feel like I should have had Something exciting planned while they're cooking. Like a while they're cooking thing? What do they do? Oh, that's we needed to have a set cooked. Yeah. That's what we needed to and have done. And then just like pull them out and of there. Pull them out. Oh, look here's, at that. here's what it looks like when it's finished. But not, yeah. I think my brain is just very focused on them. On the madelines? It's like, it's like staring at a pot of water, watch it, like waiting for it to boil. 
Yeah. It feels like it takes forever, but it only took the time that it takes. Hey, Taylor. Hey, Carol. What are the most common mindset, uh, like, flaws or mindset kind of things that people talk to you about in your um, in your calls, in your coaching calls? What are the most common, like... Yeah. So, something that I said earlier was that it's not necessarily, hey, Taylor, it's not necessarily new level, new devil. It's new level, exact same fucking devil. So the exact same that I talk about on the calls with my academy ladies who are in, um, you know, most of them are still in their nine to fives. Most of them are brand new baby business owners. The exact same thing that I talk with them on my monthly mindset and goal setting session is the exact same thing that I talk about with my clients who are in the inner circle who are making a million dollars a year. $800,000 a year, $750,000 a year. It's the exact same conversation or a very uh, kind of like two sides of the same coin, right? It's the exact same conversation, but just at different levels. And what I mean by that is this belief of I can't do it might show Mm. up of I can't scale my business from half a million to a million dollars is the exact same conversation of I can't leave my nine to five and go full time in my business. Nobody will pay me that much money. People will say, no one's going to sign up with me. I'm never going to get a first client. Bullshit. And then you have someone who's like, no one's going to buy my high ticket package. No one's going to pay $10,000 to coach with me. I've had people pay me six figures to coach with me, so I guarantee you somebody will pay you $500, $1,000, $10,000, $20,000, $50,000 to coach with you. And one of the reasons why is because you have a gift like you're doing this for a reason it's not that it's an accident that you're on this live stream it's not an accident that you're in my facebook group it's not an accident that you first saw a marie forleo live stream or you saw a dan henry facebook ad or whatever it was that brought you into the online business space you are here for a reason and maybe that reason is you realize that you know what i'm pretty happy doing what i'm doing or i want to stay in a nine to five but i need to make a career move but you are here for a reason. And so your job is to be present for the current moment and figure out what that reason is and then shift accordingly. For the majority of people, the reason why you're here is because you're supposed to be a successful, profitable, happy online business owner. And I think where people sometimes get stuck is they focus so much on the mindset Mm -hmm. that they miss the action. So what I tell people is that manifestation equals mindset plus movement. And what that means is if you want to get the thing that you want, first you have to believe it's possible and then you need to take the actions as if you were going to get that thing that you wanted to have. So for example, if I wanted to scale my business to eight figures, I wouldn't be saying, hey Paul, I think we need to cut half the team. They're kind of expensive. Mm. I would be doing the opposite. I would be hiring more people. If I said, you know what? My coach, she's just too much money and I think I can just figure it out on my own and I'm just going to integrate. I'm going to integrate what I've learned and I'm gonna take some time off and I'm gonna pull back. That literally does not make sense. If my manifestation, if my intention is to scale to eight figures, then I need to take action as if I were going to be or as if I already am an eight figure business owner. So mindset, so key. Mm -hmm. But that movement piece is really critical as well. And so that's why for me, my signature framework, intentional, manageable, profitable, I think blends these two really well. The intention piece really comes down to mindset and also strategic thinking, right? Making an intentional decision to launch something at a particular time is strategic. Mindset and strategy do not have to compete with each other. They actually don't compete with each other. They are hand in hand and they go completely together. So that intentional piece is really being intentional about what do I believe to be true? What do I want to believe to be true? How am I going to get there? How do I need to show up? What is best for me? Because that's the other thing that doesn't really work. We are making cookies, but we are not cookie cutter, okay? So trying on other people's strategies for size, trying on other people's you know, ideas and programs and let me just do everything that everyone else is doing instead of listen to my own internal compass does not work. That's why my programs are so much about coaching and really figuring out what is going to be the best possible fit for you. We don't just coach coaches. Mm. We have strategy, um, uh, what's Crace? Crace is an impact consultant, an impact strategist, right? We have impact strategists. We have um, the head of a virtual assistance association network. We have every type of coach under the sun, obviously. We have social media managers, online business managers, web developers, web designers, copywriters, you name it. We have it, we coach it, 
And that's because it's not about here's the 10 steps to make it happen. It's about here's the roadmap and the very specific detours and shifts that we think you should make to create the most intentional, natural, profitable business for you. So that manageable piece then is about doing it in a way that really is easy. So for example, I had prepped out ahead of time all of my flour, my sugar, my eggs, my butter. I measured it out exactly so that when it came time to doing this live stream and having to bake and teach at the same time, I could really easy, easily put into my bowl whatever I needed yep. without having to stop and measure and figure it out because that would be very inefficient, yep. right? So I learned this word, it's mise en place, and it's a French, Whoa, French phrase. Whoa, hello. And it's in cooking, it basically just means that you have your prep work. Ah. So your mise en place is your prep work. Your mise en place. There you go. So likewise, being very manageable in your business is about being very strategic and creating systems and having support and doing things in a way that are going to be very easy. If there's ever anything you do in your business more than once, it needs to have a system around it. So that manageable piece is really key for us. And the reason why is because we don't build our lives around our business. We build our business around our lives. So if I'm gonna have a multiple seven figure business and still work 20 hours a week, it needs to be manageable. And then the last piece is it obviously needs to be profitable. And so that's where we talk about making money. That's where we talk about launches, passive income, funnels, stacking our offers. And all of that we talk about inside of our accelerator program, which is currently enrolling. So if you do want to hit six figures in your business, I'll drop a link for that later, or you can just go to my website, sabrinaphillip.com, poke around, you'll find it. But that's exactly what we talk about. Yeah. So the math one's worked out pretty well. Very many good cooking and baking analogies to things. <laughs> I loved the first one. I'm just gonna crack a few eggs and crack a joke or something. Crack a joke. That what was, was it at the start? Yeah. I like that one. What was it? I think I'm, it was that. Is it? I'm just gonna crack a few eggs and crack a few jokes to get us started. I thought this is great. This is. There we go. I really liked that. I think these guys might be ready to come out. Do you reckon? I'm gonna okay. get my pot holders. Yeah, whip them out. I think give them a crack. If they if they need to go back in, we can go wow. back in. My pot holders match my apron. Yeah, everything matches. Your style is impeccable. Okay. Let's see. I think we give them another 30 seconds. I think just, yeah, if we can stretch it. The thing is, it's brown around the edges. Yeah. So it should be fine. Okay. If yeah. you ever want to know if the thing that you're baking is done, just put a fork in it. If it comes out clean, it's good to go. So we're going to do that mm. test. So let's try that. Can I have a fork, please? Yeah. Yeah. Here you go. Let's see how these little guys are doing. Yeah, the audience is on, on a cliffhanger here. They're on the edge. It's clean. Yep, I think they're good. You reckon they're, yep, they're good. They're good to go. We'll, we'll give them another 30 seconds if you think. I will turn off the oven okay. and give it 30 seconds. All right. How's that work? Yeah, the camera. Oh, hi guys. So those are coming out. We're going to take a peek at them. And I have my big cake stand. Oh, yes. We're not going to put those in there because they need to cool down wow. for a little bit. Bummer. But what we've seen today, Madeline's, um, easy. Very easy. Not simple, but easy. Mm -hmm. Mindset, simple, but not easy. Exactly. So Madeline's easy but not simple. Mindset simple but not easy. Um, the recipe I will get the link for you and drop it right now. It's the Julia Child's recipe, so it's on a few different websites. Oh, I don't. It's not logged in. Can I text it to you? Yeah. Yeah. Or let me just get it on your phone and post it. Okay. So it's the Kanama Cooks Julia Child. Julia Child's Madeline's. Okay, if you just put that on the sure. live stream, I will pull these guys out. You do. We're gonna take a peek at our new friends. Simple and easy. We <laughs> changed our minds. <laughs> okay, we are recipe. The link is in the description for the recipe. Perfect. Oh, these look 
Okay. Let's see how these are looking. I suppose they're looking pretty good. What we're going to do is... Do you think the silicone is hot? No, nah, silicone won't be too hot. It won't conduct heat. Mm. Do you want me to try? No, I'm making okay. this wrong. You can do it. You got this. I know. what they look like with the shell edge. A little egg in a nest. Yeah. So we're gonna let these cool. Do you want the shell egg the shell thing up? Yeah we can do shell side up. Because it's prettier that way. I think the recipe says to do it the opposite. Oh does it? Well follow the recipe. You don't yeah, follow me. I mean. That'll be fine. I am the least Julia Child's person no, there in the world. Right. See I don't know if I like the silicone because this one's way darker. I'll eat that one. Okay. You can eat that one. Okay. Ooh, that one's nice and fluffy. Look how yeah, light that one is. Yeah, these look really nice. Guess what we're having for dinner tonight? No. Madeline's. No. <laughs> we're having creamy lemon parmesan chicken. I found the recipe on the internet and I was like, let's do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the silicone in the sink and then I'm going to put this guy back in the oven and then I'm going to talk to my friends. <laughs> the last one. Perfect. Done. She goes. Back in the oven. Ooh, wow. And here's what we have. Very easy. Very fun. They look fancy. So you feel very accomplished after. I think that's why I cook for an ego boost. That's why I bake. Well, you're a good baker. So. But yeah, so then what you can do once these cool down a little bit is you can just sprinkle powdered sugar and you're done. And then the internet says that you can keep these for like two days or a day or two in the fridge. I would just eat them forever. I'm sure they would be fine. Yeah, same. <laughs> but yeah, so thoughts on the silicone mold? Yeah, I like it. Great mold. Yeah, so I think next time I'm not going to do the butterflower mix. I think okay. if you do the silicone mold, you don't need the butterflower mix, but if you're doing the metal tint, you definitely want that. Mm -hmm. But yes, I was very happy with these. I was very happy with our mindset conversation today. I feel like we covered a lot of ground. Um, that being said though, mindset is not a one-time conversation, which we have definitely learned from today's conversation. This is something that is gonna keep coming up every single time you hit another level in your business. I think how you interact with your mindset in terms of how you manage it is going to be very different in the beginning stages when you're first getting to your first 100K. The reason being is that is the first time you will come up against your scarcity mindset, your visibility mindset, your not enoughness. And the good news is once you work through that and you take the action and essentially prove yourself wrong, um, anytime you need to get to the next level, you can lean back on that evidence. Mm. Yep. And I think that evidence piece is so key because that's what a belief ultimately is. We believe something to be true because we perceive it to be a fact. We see things as facts because we have accumulated evidence, right? Even if something is an opinion, for most people, it is a fact, right? So if you would ask me what I think of Donald Trump, I would be like, he's the worst president ever. And you'd be like, well, that's just an opinion. But in my mind, I have all of these facts and evidence and belief and that influences how I feel about him, that influences the behaviors that I take, AKA I didn't vote for him, not gonna vote for him again. And that opinion is actually for me, very visceral and real. That is a belief for me. Likewise, with your beliefs around what you believe to be true on money, success, business, abundance, relationships, all of it. Once you hit that first kind of success or evidence, 
make that your new evidence. So for me, if that success is, that belief is, Paul and I can have a long, happy relationship, every time we hit another year, every time we hit another milestone, I catalog that as evidence of something that's going to be something I can lean back on. Anytime I do wobble or shake, because you will wobble and shake, and that is part of the process, it doesn't mean you're failing at mindset, it means it's time to lean back in. So thank you for joining us today. I hope that you will make these. What I would love is if you make these, please post them on Instagram, tag me at Sabrina and Philip. You can use hashtag the coach's kitchen if you want to. I'm telling you guys, this is gonna be a syndicated TV show one day. It's going big. I'm this is gonna you. be huge. I'm telling yeah. you, it is, it is. It's going big. So get 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 in while it's hot. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next week. I think next week is content and beef bolognese, but I will double check, don't quote me. Thanks everyone, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day.